Okay, solving a rational equation is going to be somewhat similar to a linear equation with fractions. We're just going to have two initial steps. So like with the linear equation with fractions, we do want to get rid of the fractions. Uh, that is part of our initial work. But before we get started on that, we actually need to exclude an answer, which sounds crazy because we haven't even started solving it. But there's one number we can never, ever, ever divide by, and that is zero. And so the first thing we need to do is look at our two denominators that have an x in them. And we need to take those denominators and set them equal to zero. So we say 2x equals zero and 3x equals zero. And we need to solve for x. And so when I solve for x, I get x equals zero, divide both sides here by three, and I get x equals zero again. And so what I learn from these two situations where I've set the denominator equal to zero is that x cannot be zero. And this should make sense because let's go back to the denominator 3x. If I plug in zero for x, then I have three times zero, which is zero. And I would have the fraction one divided by zero, which is nothing. The mathematical world as we know it blows up. All right. And so just remember, we can never, ever, ever divide by zero. All right, so we know now x cannot equal zero. All right, and we're just going to keep this information handy. Now we need to figure out what we're going to multiply every fraction by to get rid of the fractions. All right, so we have a 2x, we have an 18, and we have a 3x. Okay, so recall we are just going to try to multiply numbers or see if there's a number that everything divides into, okay? And so here I have a 2, an 18, and a 3. What would be my least common multiple there? Well, I could multiply 2 times 3 or 2 times 18, but my eyes are drawn to the number 18. Why? Because of course, 18 divides into 18 one time, 2 divides into 18, and 3 divides into 18. So I know that 18 is the number I'm going to multiply every fraction by. But notice we also have the x's, which is what's making it a rational equation. And so I'm also going to have an x in what I multiply every fraction by. In other words, if I multiply every fraction by 18x, I will be able to eliminate the fractions themselves. Okay, so now that I know I'm going to multiply every fraction, or every term, should I say, by 18x, I do so. And just like with the linear equations, I write 18x over 1. Why do I do this? So that you guys remember we multiply fractions straight across, meaning that 18x only hits the numerator. All right, so let's do this. Let's actually multiply straight across. Well, that gives me 18x times 5 all divided by 2x equals 18x times 7 all divided by 18 minus 18x times 1 all divided by 3x. Now why in the world would I not just go ahead and multiply 18 and 5 in the first term or 18 and 7 in the second term? Remember the whole reason why we're multiplying by 18x is so we get rid of these darn fractions. And so notice in the first term the x cancels and 2 goes into 18 nine times. In our second term the 18 cancels and in our last term the x cancels, and the 3 goes into 18 six times. And so now I can write 9 times 5, which is 45, equals 7x minus 6. And now I have a rather easy a rational equation to solve. I can add 6 to both sides, and I get 51 equals 7x, and then lastly divide both sides by 7, leaving me with x equals 
51 over 7. My final check here is to make sure I have not gotten the solution that I originally excluded. Well, clearly 51 over 7 is not 0, so we're good. We have our answer, x equals 51 over 7.